Should the BBC restart playing the national anthem on television in the middle of the night to foster, quotes, unity and pride in our nation? That's what the Romford MP Andrew Rossendale believes as we head towards the Queen's Platinum Jubilee later this year. We've had lots of your comments in on that as well. Paul, should they? I didn't know they'd stopped, to be honest. Um, <laughs> you saying you're not up that late to notice? <laughs> well, it, it, I, I remember that as a youngster it would be played at, at close down and it would often wake me up if I'd fallen asleep after a few beers on the sofa. The, the national anthem would wake you up and that was, that was quite a good thing. I think the argument against it from the BBC is that they just go straight to the BBC News Channel now. Um, so there isn't a traditional close down as such. Um, but look, if, I mean, if it were to come back in some form, I'm, I'm quite relaxed about that. He did, Andrew Rossendale, the, the Rumford MP, also made the argument that kids should be singing it in schools on a weekly basis as well, um, which I have to say I don't think I would support. Because I, I, I think there's a danger you end up slipping into jingoism, um, and they have it in America where they pledge allegiance to the, to the flag in schools, salute the flag, sing the national anthem, etc. And in my view... That's not really our kind of patriotism. I think our patriotism is more sort of understated rather than an, an in-your-face patriotism. So, so if it were to come back, all well and good, but I don't think it's a huge burning issue for many people. Uh, I, I, I agree with you, but I, I'm very struck by the unwisdom of the BBC and the political ineptness of the BBC. I mean, it does depend on the government. I, I wish it didn't and I wish it wouldn't for the licence fee. Mm. So why do provocative things like drop the national anthem? I mean, this is a gift to uh, people like Andrew Rossendale. It's a gift to the enemies of the BBC in the Conservative Party, and I admit that they do exist. Uh, I mean, the deal with the licence fee is that you get public service broadcasting, mm -hmm. that you use the word British in your title, that you are a global brand. Now, certain responsibilities, it seems to me, go with that. And I would have thought, to remove the national anthem was a provocation. But a number of people have suggested that GB News take up the national yep. anthem. It rather reminds me of when um, British Airways stopped using the Union flag, so Virgin mm. Airways took it up the next day. So uh, Margaret I don't, Thatcher, I, I don't Margaret know whether Thatcher the, famously threw a hanky over it. Hanky over it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether the GB News management can hear us. Uh, well, I'm sure they're listening to us and watching uh, our every uh, utterance here this morning. Uh, I'm more than that listening to our viewers because we've had quite a lot of GB views in this morning absolutely saying that this is the national broadcaster. Why wouldn't we play the national anthem? And I'm interested in what you say, Paul, about that's not our sort of way of doing things. We're more understated. Of course, in Northern Ireland, there's quite a lot of flag flying and people are yeah. very keen to be identified with one side or another. But it brings me back to, do you remember Emily Thornberry and that mm. uh, incident mm. where... Don't she, I just. Yes, exactly. Made the mm. comment about flying flags and white van man and the, all of The that. Rochester and Strood by-election, I think yeah. it was in, in 2014. And, and it really goes to the heart of the issue with, with um, today's Labour Party. And I think how that they are just out of touch with provincial Britain and, and working class Britain that, that Emily, who I like by the way, Emily Thornbury, but she, she saw this white van outside a, a house with the St George's flag and clearly thought it was so noteworthy and so unusual that it was worth, worth yeah. tweeting. Um, and obviously had to resign. I think she was a shadow attorney general at the time and had to, had to resign within 24 hours. But, but really does go to the heart of, of. She clearly has never canvassed in Northern Ireland. 